Hello! Today I'm going to be unwrapping and unboxing this multifunction filming light by the company UniQ. At least I hope that's how it's pronounced. And Nick bought this for me for my birthday after I'd shown it to him a few times saying I was really intrigued to find out what this is actually like. And I have been looking around to find something that's a bit more portable for the occasions when I would like to film away from my main desk. So let's get into it and see what it's like. And in case you're wondering why sometimes my hand movements may not be matching what I'm saying, that's because I decided to re-record everything in a voiceover. Because I'd never used this before, it took me ages to figure out how to open it and there's a lot of disjointed footage of me just trying to work out what I'm doing. Here I'm showing my current setup which is where I film over my main desk and I've been using a phone for the most part because that's the thing I started out with and it actually works really well for things like time-lapse footage so I haven't fully switched over to any other camera although I do use other cameras sometimes but the way I've rigged up the phone bracket it's really heavy and very awkward to move anywhere else it usually has a clamp but that desk does not take the clamp so I had to mount it in this other thing I don't even know what that is and you can see I've even stuck it in with blue tack it's such a dodgy makeshift arrangement but until I can find something that's better this is what I'm working with and behind my main filming desk is another desk which is one of those tilt up drafting desks and this is actually where I first started filming videos for YouTube and I had small lamps that sat on the desk and I've got one big one which hangs over the desk and that was pretty much all of my lighting it was great but the problem with smaller lamps is that they do cast shadows and I'm showing you the main light that I was using for a while there and also it was causing a lot of reflections on anything you could see the ring light on it and it was very annoying so I did end up switching to my other desk because I needed the space around it to fit the main filming lights which I'll show you in a moment but I would like to come back and use this desk for extra projects sometimes I have things set up on my main desk and I would just like to film a little thing on a clear space so this is why I would like to have this desk back in use as well with a more portable filming setup so my main filming lights have large soft boxes which sit out over the top of my desk and two lights shining at an angle like this will negate shadows which is what I want here they are switched on they're warming up so one looks a bit different to the other in color and right now I'm filming with them to unbox this light so you can see that there is very minimal shadow on the backdrop here and they are fantastic for my everyday filming but they are massive and bulky and such a pain to move anywhere else which is why I just wanted to get myself a small little holder so I can film on the go and finally I'm pulling it out of the box <laughs> and now we can see what's on here we've got foldable mobile phone holder with a remote control it has a two-sided fill light it can shoot from a high angle has a rechargeable battery for up to three hours and apparently you can shoot full angle whatever that means so let's take a look and it also goes up to a height of 130 centimeters or 1.3 meters which is just over four feet that's pretty impressive and it's of course also foldable which is the most important thing finally I'm opening it after about four minutes of blathering on <laughs> so the first thing I see is the charging cable it's a standard USB-C which is pretty much what all of the modern gizmos have these days and my phone also has that so it's a very handy one to have and I much prefer this design over the earlier micro USB things which had a slightly different end and I still have a bunch of those cables in the house so here's the unit itself all nicely wrapped in a bit of foam and a plastic sheath so very well wrapped maybe not so good for the environment but I do like my products to be not getting scratched in transit so I will forgive them for that pulling it out it's a really sleek looking unit I was so impressed with it look how wonderful it is I love that it's white as well that always looks so modern and that was the USB charging port right there so really sleek and streamlined it also is quite a hefty unit more than I was expecting in fact it weighs 1208 grams 1.2 kilos or 
2.66 pounds, just so that we all know how heavy this is. So it is still a bit cumbersome if you are wanting to travel with it overseas or something, but it does kind of need that weight because it acts as a counterbalance, which we will see shortly. But now here is me trying to figure out how to open this thing, and there is a label here which says, do not lift it, you need to push it first, and I peeled that off. I have remembered it since though, because you can break it quite easily, I think, so it doesn't want to lift anyway, you have to push it up first, and then the whole top of it will flip open and inside we can see the light and the phone holder at the top and then it's on a telescopic pole which folds out and here's a mistake I made because I didn't read the instructions first surprise surprise do not pull it out like this see how those little tabs have now gotten stuck that's not what you want those little tabs actually flip out 90 degrees and here I'd managed to pull them both out and jam them and I could not get those tabs out for ages. A little bit of a design flaw because it looks like it wants to open like this but you need to flip those tabs out first. Oh and then I discovered that that little thing I'm pointing at is the remote control. How cute is that? It comes out of its little slot there. Oh joy, another thing to lose. <laughs> At this point I actually found the instruction manual which was lurking at the bottom of the box. There are two pieces here, this has got the little diagrams on it and the other one has some pictures which is very helpful. And you can see this is where I'm figuring out that I had pulled those out the wrong way. So hopefully if you're watching this and you end up getting one of these lights, you can learn from this mistake and not make it yourself. Before going any further, I really needed to charge the light, and you can plug it into any USB charging point, in this case my mechanical desk which goes up and down. So you can see the little blue light flashing there indicating it's charging, and I left it on for a couple of hours. I'm only thinking now that I should have timed how long it took to charge. My best guess is maybe two hours, something like that. But anyway, I managed to get this box back into one piece and that's because Nick very kindly managed to pull those tabs back out for me it was so difficult and this time around I'm going to do it the right way and pull them out 90 degrees but you can see how easily it slides and so it's not hard to make that mistake of sliding it too far and making the tab overextend the wrong way the reason it slides like that is so that you can actually fit your phone in and it will take various different sizes of phone. I think most modern phones will fit into this. It's quite a stiff connection though, and really it would be great if I had a third hand so that two can be used to pull that bit apart, and then the third hand is then able to slide the phone in. You could see me struggling a bit with it here to get my phone to go in, and that was probably the biggest annoyance of this entire unit, is just fitting the phone into it. You can see my finger got jammed but eventually I got there so having an extra person to help out is not a bad idea and this is one way the phone will sit. You can see the light underneath it. It also has a light on the other side so there are a few ways in which you can mount the phone thankfully. So here is the bottom part of the unit which <laughs> you can see it gets very top heavy. And really it is much easier to pull the telescope part out before mounting the phone onto the light. Anyway, we live and learn, so it folds up 90 degrees and that white bit there screws down onto the base to make it nice and sturdy. And I think it says, you know, don't screw it too tightly, but make it tight enough so it's not going to move around. And then you can see the top part there with the light folds down 90 degrees here as well. And that top part can actually pivot more than that, so you can move the light around into different angles, which is very handy. And hopefully you'll see this a bit more when I've pulled the telescopic bit out as well. I got distracted here again because this is where I had discovered this little thing was the remote control. So you can see it's very cute. It has two buttons for the two lights so you can control them individually. And the other one is a little camera symbol. You can actually connect your phone up with Bluetooth to the light stand and then control your phone with the remote control probably to record and things like that. I have not actually tried this bit so apologies for not being able to explain that one thing because I still am teaching myself how to use this light. Oh, it's so complicated. 
And the last thing to note with the remote is that it does actually have to charge separately and it uses the same charging cable as the rest of the light unit. But moving on, I took the phone off again because I wanted to pull this telescopic part out and it's quite stiff. It does take a bit of effort to pull it up and you've got to use a bit of brute strength. And this might be because it's brand new when I did this. So the first couple of times it does take a bit of getting used to just how much force you need to actually pull this pole out of itself. But this is good in that it's really sturdy. And here it is at full extension. It goes all the way up. It's really tall and I am impressed with how much of a pole is actually folded up inside this unit. It's pretty impressive and my studio lights are on there. They are blinding at the moment. Oops, <laughs> I should have probably put that on the floor. Never mind, you can see that it really does extend high up off my desk so I'm pleased with that because it means there is a lot of range for filming up high and also you can film low as well. It also has a second hinge or pivot point near the top of the pole and you can see it folds down like that and then the light part sits parallel to the table so you can film straight down and I really like that. It also tilts in different directions so you can be on an angle too. It's not just one direction. To turn the light on there are two buttons at the end of the unit where the charging port is and you have to hold those down in order for the light to switch on. You can switch on one individually or you can turn on both at the same time. So press and hold for a couple of seconds and the light will switch on. There we go. You could see both of them came on there. There's one on this side and one on the other. You could see that that head does actually swivel quite a bit, which is very handy. These are just little LED bank lights in here and it's very difficult to show on the camera at the moment because I've got a light shining into the camera. So that's why everything's gone a bit funny in the background. You can also press and hold the light buttons on the remote control and it will do the same thing. But I can see me forgetting to charge the remote control on its own, so I'm really glad you can manually switch the lights on from the unit itself. I think it's more what I would use most of the time anyway, rather than using the remote. Can you see the light changing? There are quite a few settings in this light that you can switch it from a really warm yellow one into a really cool bright white light like the bottom one there. And they both change colours so they both have exactly the same settings. And for that I think this light unit is fantastic. The lighting technology these days is so much better than it ever used to be. So this is just really handy even if you wanted it as a lamp and not to film. It also functions perfectly well as a travel lamp or one you can move around your house if you need to shine a bit more light on something. So it does have multiple uses which is excellent. But for me its primary function is for filming so here's my phone set up on it and you could see how it's showing my table backdrop on the screen. Look there we go you can see my hand as well. So I've turned off my studio lights for this and I'm just using ambient light to film this. And now this is the phone recording with the light and only that light. So you can see there is significant shadowing caused by my hands and this happens with any LED lights because it's a directional light it causes a lot more harsh shadowing. This is raw footage I've not edited it at all so this is pretty much what it will look like straight out of the phone camera with no extra editing. And for comparison this is with the extra editing I would do in post-production so you can see it is a bit brighter but I still cannot get rid of those shadows. I'm not good enough as an editor in order to do that I don't even think that is possible so I can make the screen brighter but I cannot eliminate the shadows and that is just the one problem with the portable light. But it's still pretty decent for on-the-go filming you know if I'm somewhere where I just cannot use my studio lights it's okay. And now here's a demonstration of me using the light to film a painting. I did this in my living room while I was watching TV and on the left hand side I have a lamp shining because it was getting quite dark at this stage and you could see that it's a lot more yellow to the left than it is to the right. Where I've got the painting is pretty much directly underneath the light. Now I did find another slight 
floor with the way the camera and light is set out because you have to hang the phone over the light you will have the light kind of to one side it would be so amazing if you could get one where there was a light on either side of the camera to get a much more even spread but really that's just a little nitpicky thing that I noticed and what you can do is grab another small light and put it to the left hand side if you wanted to get a more even lighting effect. You can see how our lamp is much warmer than the cool LED lights that I'm using. I mean you can switch the LEDs to a much warmer light but I much prefer to use a cooler light because it really does show up colours a lot more accurately. And now I've brightened up the shadows and highlights a bit in DaVinci Resolve, which is the program I use to edit my videos. It does improve it quite a lot, but I really would have to change my settings quite a bit in order to get rid of more of that shadow. You can see the shadow underneath my hand when it's over on the right hand side there, and that's just impossible to get rid of, at least with my level of expertise, which is not that high, honestly. But I think it's pretty acceptable. I mean, I'm not too worried about the shadowing. It's not causing that big of a problem, I don't think. But I do have a second portable light that I probably would use in the future just to add a more even lighting effect across the whole of the screen. So the painting itself, I actually traced this design out of a coloring book. I think it's one of Kirby Rosani's designs and I was going to do a far more detailed painting but I was feeling a bit impatient so the bottom of it ended up being a bit of a blobby mess. They're supposed to be crystals but mine ended up looking like abstract trees because I was feeling a bit too impatient to colour in every single part of the crystal plus also using watercolour is a lot more challenging doing that as it has a tendency to run everywhere when it's wet. So I might revisit this actual drawing with coloured pencils and colour in the book itself. But for today, I thought it would be a fun little design just to paint with my limited edition set of Schmincke watercolours, plus a few extras that I added in there at a later time, in case you're wondering what that palette is. But going back to the lighting unit, overall, I think it's really great. While it is a little bit heavier than I was expecting, it's also very sturdy and once you get the hang of opening it, it's quite easy to open and close the whole unit, although it does have a bit of a learning curve to begin with. At least for me, I just couldn't figure it out to start with. But now I've got the hang of it, I really like the unit, I think it's sleek, it's easy to port around and I'm very happy that Nick got it for me for my birthday. <laughs> Thank you Nick! <laughs> so I have ideas to use this for plain air painting outside or even just if I'm traveling and want to do some filming in a hotel or if I'm out visiting my father and want to film there. So it's got a lot of uses for me. And here's the final sketch. Not exactly a masterpiece, but you get the idea. I like how the colors turned out at least. So here's how I'd filmed it on this little coffee table with a piece of paper as the backdrop and the stand is actually on the carpet. And I naughtily used my latest Joanna Basford coloring book as a bit of a makeshift stand because when this thing is on a carpet it gets very top heavy and it kept tilting forward with the weight of the phone so sliding the book underneath just really stabilized this whole thing so it wasn't wobbling around too much. So I guess over time as I use this light more often I will get the hang of it better and I'll be able to actually maybe come back at a future time to give more of an update on how this light works. But for now I'm pretty happy with it, I like the design and I think it's a very useful unit which so far seems to be really high quality and I don't have any issues with it now that I've actually figured out how to use the thing. <laughs> so that's all I have for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been useful if you're actually looking around for a filming light like this. It also works as a regular light so it would be great for sewing and crafts as well. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!